What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use the color replacement tool. Now the color replacement tool is right underneath the eyedropper tool here and it's in the area where the brush tool or the pencil, pencil tool might be. So click on color replacement tool. Now the color re replacement tool is pretty cool. You can pretty much replace a color that you pick out of here or a color that you set to your uh, foreground or background and change the colors in the image. So for example, this hat that I have here, I could change it with um, some tweaking and going over. I could change this to a completely different color. As you can see, I can, I can change it to this uh, teal color here. And as I click on different areas and maybe adjust the tolerance a little bit more, I can get these uh, different red areas out of here and paint them over. And with some tweaking and stuff like that, I can get this to work a little better. Um, same thing. Oh, I have it on fine edges. That could be why. That's what, probably why it was hard. Same thing with these. I could change the color of that bra that he has on his shirt. Didn't realize that would have, that's what it was at first. Um, interesting picture I picked, I guess. So um, that's what the color replacement tool does. Let me uh, go back to where we had nothing out. Plus, I got this guy's face blurred here because I don't know who that is. I don't want him getting mad at me for using this picture. If he ever doesn't look like he's a, a Photoshop guy, but you never know. Everybody's different. So let's go over some of the options that we've got here. We've got um, our different brush options here. We've got our different modes. We can affect the hue. We can affect the saturation, the color, or the luminosity. We've got our sampling over here. We've got uh, this one, which is continuous, which means that if I go to sample somewhere, it's going to sample as, as I click and hold down, it's going to sample all the different colors that I keep on going over top. Um, and what decides where you're sampling is the little plus sign in the middle of your cursor. So right where you have that plus sign, right in the center of that, is where it's going to sample the color. The next one is once. So if I click on that and click on a color such as this pink here, um, it's only going to take away that color no matter where I draw on here. So if I come down here, it's probably going to affect this pink down here and this pink over here. So that's how that one works. The next one we have is the uh, background swatch. If I click on that, anything I have is going to get changed to red to my background color. So I can, um, anything that's red is going to get changed to my foreground color is what I mean. So what I want to do is I want to go to my background swatch and select a color. So if I hold down all, it changes it to the eyedropper tool. So I can select this pink here, switch it back to my background color, and start drawing. And of course, it's only going to take stuff that is that pink color and change the color. So for example, if I wanted to change the hat to uh, pink, I switch these two and start drawing. And now the hat is pink. So uh, that's how that works. So those are our different types there. We've got our limits here. Um, discontiguous means um, that anything that is the same color within your cursor. So if I have my cursor out big like this, I'll show you for example. Let's go back to where I have everything the same color. Let's uh, click on here, increase my cursor size so that it takes up this um, ribbon here and the bra here. So let's change this to a different color that we can easily see. Let's go with this color, neon. So if I have contiguous selected, if I select the bra color here, it's only going to select uh, the colors that are within the color of the bra because it's separate from the pink colors within here. Now if I go back and select discontiguous and select the bra while the ribbon is within my cursor it's going to do both of them and that's because it takes whatever color you selected and finds whatever color that is within your cursor and colors in everything else with it and then for find edges here it um, 
tries to like define the edges by painting over it. So if you have some bad edges, use the find edges to go around and finely tune the object. Um, we've got our tolerance here, and this is the color range. And um, you should know tolerance by now if you've been watching the tutorials. If not, it's basically the uh, amount of color that you're allowing the, um, the color replacement tool to paint over top of. Anti-alias here, if you have that checked, it gives you nice smooth lines. And uh, that's it for the color replacement tool that I wanted to show you. Um, basically, you use it to change out other colors. And with some good fine tuning and everything, you can get uh, into your document and nicely you can use some of your uh, paintbrush tool or something like that and clean up everything so that there's no more pink. You can see that in this image we've got artifacting where pink comes around on the outside and I'm sure that there wasn't pink splashed all around the outside of the image on the actual shirt. So that's just the product of artifacting and you'll have to clean that up with some of the techniques you've learned in earlier tutorials here. So thanks a lot for watching and I wish you guys have a good day and keep learning a lot about Photoshop. See you guys later and stay tuned for some upcoming tutorials later on.